What's the best board game for a first date? We know it's not Splendor. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Board and Scale Podcast. Battle of the Games. Board and Scale's first ever snake video. Another vendor spotlight. At the Penguin's the only one with any character. What you're likely to hatch when you mix certain genetics. You know I don't play right, right, right. Welcome to this week's episode of the Board and Scale Podcast. And today you have me, your co-slash host, Sibo, and also, go ahead and introduce yourself. <laughs> What's your name? He was going to do the... Hey, give me a... Hey, how would you... Baka. How would you do... How What's, would you, What's your name? How would you... Interp- Tim. How would you... Interp- Fuck you. Huh? How would you interpretively dance your name? Oh. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, right? <Did> you <laughs> spell out each letter. That's not interpretive though. That's not. No, it's you got to like how do you how do you <laughs> Oh, shoot. I used to know the ABCs. That doesn't count either, man. You got to You know what? A D for effort, okay? <laughs> He's not done yet. I mean, it is a bit restrictive if you got to be sitting, but I mean, I feel like you, I feel like that. I feel I felt a lot of power. Yeah, felt that's a true. A lot of power there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, commenters, go ahead and uh, one to one to ten. How much how much power you felt in in that introduction of Dwayne for himself? And then Kevin, like a normal human, can you just say your name <laughs> as you introduce yourself? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't just say it. This is Kevin, everybody. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those episodes. <laughs> Okay, uh, we're back after a short week of of not seeing each other Tom since the last time we recorded. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump into the highlights. As always, I will not be going first. It'll, oh, actually, no. be, it'll actually be Kevin because you know what? Seniority oh, takes precedence. Phone. I don't have my phone. Oh, shit. Seniority takes precedence here. So Kevin does have his phone. Please yeah, ignore it. Cheating. He can't remember otherwise it's what cheating. we played all this week. So when you're when you're a man of my yeah. Uh, so this is you guys are gonna hate this, right? They're gonna hate this comment. Since we recorded, right? So we we played we played on Sunday and we played today. Of all of the games, most of them I was kind of like, mm, eh, right? And I won't In the last week. Well, no, since Sunday, because like the games we played on Friday before we recorded last time, like some of those were were pretty good. And I was like, all right, I could use those. Was a Kavango and, and and Undergrove, but when we played on Sunday and what we played today, like other than the one that I'm gonna steal or use, a lot of the other ones, I was kind of, eh, you know, and I won't steal them because that may be some of yours. But I'm I got mine. I'm gonna give it to the game we just played. <laughs> Should have gone first. I gave you the opportunity, okay, Plague and you gave it up. Incorporated Plague Inc. Right. The board game based off of the very, very, very popular uh, iPhone or just a mobile game, game. mobile game uh, where you try to infect the world, <laughs> kill everybody, right? It's really popular before the pandemic. I assume it's probably still... You got games on your phone. <laughs> it's a delightful game. Like a lot of games that, that you port from like a mobile or a, a video game don't usually work well as, as board games, but surprisingly... Plague Inc. is a really, really good port um, on its own, even not knowing if it had been a, a video game before. It's just a solid game. It's really fun. It's very light, uh, but it's it's still thematic. Uh, it's got enough depth. It lets you play with the how you evolve your disease and like how you're moving across the map and whatnot. There's still a little bit of luck about the cards you draw, um, the die you roll, um, whatnot. But it's fun. It's delightful. And I think you can get it for like 35 bucks. So it's a, it's really a pretty cheap game. So I'm going to have to play Gink. Me next? Mm-hmm. Mm. <coughs> All right. We're going. Science. Uh, you can also just, you can just copy it, by the way, if you really want. No, 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 no. Totally cool. I got it now. I got it. I got it. I got okay. it. <laughs> My weekly highlight of the week of the week is going to be. It's a good thing it's not his weekly highlight of the month. <laughs> Genotype. Oh. 
genotype. Uh, me- goodness gracious. Jesus. Who's drunk here? You or me? Genotype. <laughs> My fingers don't Worker reach. placement game themed around. The Mendelian phenotype. G- uh, re- uh, huh? Peas. <laughs> themed <laughs> around. Peas. What everybody learned in middle school science class. Which is? Peas and mutations. <laughs> no, but what's the thing called? Punnett squares. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. all based on Punnett squares. Um, it's, it's quick, but it's not too quick to where it's like, dang, I couldn't get what I wanted done. I feel like every time I played this game, at least personally, when I play it, I feel like that's the best I could have done this game when it, when it ends. I also like the, I like the Punnett square part because it's like you you're manipulating the dice without manipulating the dice. It's it's like it's weird that way because each die has its its face, but the face is you're, connected. You're more manipulating what the result means. Yeah. In the die. Yeah. And I really like that part because if you really need something, you can just make it what you need. I need a lot of I need a not a lot of d- double little R's. I'm just gonna make it all little R's, and nobody can do anything about it until the next round. Little R's, little R's, little R's, not, and little T's, little G's, little F's. It's also like it's not the it's not the prettiest game. What the? Hmm. Not really. It's, it's all kind of brown. Guys, come on. <laughs> I mean, the peas are Look green. At this. It's beautiful. You got very brightly colored dye at the very least. You That's do. True. That's that is that is true. So one part of the board is. <laughs> it's half the board, okay. And it's also it's also simple too. That's fair. It is. It's it's a simple worker placement. You put your fucking spades out. Do the do the thing. Sure. It's not really much. It's not really depth. much to say about it. It's got depth, though. I'll give it that. I've only played it once, but what I remember from it, like, it's an easy game to learn. Um, but there's enough depth. There's enough going on. What you're doing with the dice. Um, there's a lot of options. And there's a couple different ways to play and attack the game. So, it's simple, but it has it has a little. Depth. Okay. Are you good? Are yep. You, are you good? All right. We'll my highlight peas. of the week is a slightly narcissistic. My highlight of the week is that these two fellas here chose my games as their Aww. highlights of the week. Plague Inc., the board game, has been a, uh, a staple filler game in our collection for years now at this point. It's a game I pull out with family gamers who are tr- like able to take that step up into a game that's not going to be crazy deep, not going to be crazy complicated, that can be played you know, in a relatively decent time. And I like to use it as a filler game for more knowledgeable gamers such as these two fellas uh, to just fill the gap in between our longer games or... Just a shorter time window. I think it's very fun. I've always appreciated that there's two sides of the board. You have the beginner game, which I have used for family. And you have the advanced side, which is the the viral side. That has a lot more uh, choice or affects your choices a lot more throughout the game. But yeah. And genotype, like he was saying. It's a relatively simple worker placement game. You place your little shovels that you get down on an action space. And they have very simple things that you do. You gain... Uh, different kinds of cards or fulfill a trait requirement on one of your on one of your plants or you can manipulate the possible results for the die and i don't know i this is another one that i feel like has not gotten enough love uh in the community just because i get it it's a quote-unquote boring theme because it's just based on science about the genetics of pea plants but i really love it and as someone who um has a hobby that, you know, 
is relevant with the genetics in the snake breeding, I this has a little uh, a little hand on my heart, you know, for the game type of game that it is. But yeah, that's my highlight. Would you guys both pick my highlight? Because I don't really have a different uh, game that we played that was really crazy. But you know what? Speaking of, I kind of want to play Tidal Blades. We should bring that over next time. Uh, it's not gonna be. You're not gonna be able to play it for a while. Oh no! Oh yeah! yeah. Sorry, we're getting some work done. Yeah. What? It's getting some upgrades. Mm -hmm. It's getting some plastic surgery. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bring harmonies though. <laughs> <laughs> How about Rococo? He was supposed to have brought harmonies the past three times he came over. Brought it once. He brought it one of those two times. I brought it twice. Three, one, once. You're twice. Supposed, apparently, you're supposed to bring it today. You didn't. You I didn't. The, you brought it the time before that. I was we played. I was it. not told to the bring time it before. You that, said you were going to bring it Kutna. every time you came over. No, Kenzie no. Said that. You're going to leave Kenzie it in your back that. pocket. Nope. You're going to leave it in your back pocket and pull it out. Anyways, <clears throat> and this can this can get put away. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm actually surprised because we've had that one for a while too, and it's it it went probably like two years without being opened, and then you pulled it out on a whim, like. Yeah, you were just like, I just felt like there were five of us here that day. Yeah, and, and it's a five like, player game. Do you know Dyke? Oh, that's right, Miles was there. And, and I, I and I looked and I was like, oh boy. <laughs> but I actually really did enjoy like like I really did enjoy it. The gameplay, I I I admit, all right, it's bland. It's it is brown, like you said, <laughs> fine, you know. But the gameplay is nice. You're just you're just. Hoping the die roll in your favor that you slightly, you know, pushed. Um, but yeah, great stuff. Um, now we're going to roll into some topics that I very carefully prepared. And we're going to cut here so that... Just kidding. <laughs> what do we got, Kev? <laughs> we didn't finalize this. Uh, oh, let's go with this one. Let's We'll, 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 we'll pick up where Gwen and I were, were kind of riffing on this. So... The language that people use in board games is... Usually English. English. Uh, <laughs> uh, the way we describe games and the, like, the words and the phrases that we use to describe certain types of games kind of seems to vary from player to player. Um, so just kind of throw some out there and, and then see, like, do we agree with your definition? And I'll start. I'll give my example. So Dwayne's already got a little bit of spoilers. Right? So tabletop war games right or even really just if you just say tabletop you don't need the war games for me i'll just say hey it's a tabletop game yeah when i say tabletop game <clears throat> i'm referring to games that usually have warhammer uh, warhammer is is the prime example right yep. a game where you are you've got terrain that you're laying out like this board would be perfect for it right now right you're putting terrain down uh you're picking your units you're building them you probably got one rule book for the game and then like 17 rule books like one for each race and <laughs> faction or whatever there are there for are eight for each freaking unit yep you've got you've got page of instructions you've got rulers you've got dice you've got uh, the nerdy tool yep you've got the you've got uh like uh blast markers and stuff like that and typically it involves stuff where it's like all right well my trooper is you know, prone behind cover and he's firing a Mark M 1674 872 with this modifier at this range at this unit, your unit is prone um, and it is foggy and your my guy had breakfast and yours didn't. <laughs> so therefore I'm going to refer to this chart and I'm going to roll 17 dice. I will hit on a four plus and then, you gotta do the whole thing over again. No, the beginning is the beginning is all of that, and then I'm gonna roll three dice to to try and eat this MRE for for a buff <laughs> before I take the shot. Yeah, yeah, and it's just this back and forth, you know. And it's I mean, there's like, nothing, I'm gonna say there's nothing wrong with those games if that's your game, if that's the thing, if that's what you like to play. It's not for me, not for me whatsoever. But that's not what this is about. The idea is about like what we're talking about. So to me, that's a tabletop game. If I were to say tabletop game would either of you arrive at the same definition mm -mm. so i am much more broad because yeah, you are i can because <laughs> <laughs> if i if i told somebody i'm a gamer they're automatically gonna think video games yeah video game i 100%. play i play video games 
So I say, what's up, gamers? I like tabletop games or board, Ew. Or Who, board Ew, games. Dude. Yeah, no board if, games. If, hold if, on, if, hold on. What's your default? What's a, when someone's like, oh, what kind of games do you has play? Has to be board games. Board games. I play board okay, games. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I see what you're saying now. Yes, mm-hmm. I say board games if I'm talking about this. Um. However, like when I hear tabletop gaming, I think board games, war gaming tabletop rpgs i think all of that okay i think it depends if it's someone that i get an instant impression that like they're in the hobby right of board games and tabletop stuff if they say tabletop they're probably talking about warhammer or whatever the equivalents are okay i only know warhammer kings of war is another one i know my i got a good buddy who's into um whatever they are if they say board games to me it's these but if i'm getting even more specific if I'm talking to somebody that's not y'all or y'all, it's like, <laughs> dang, put a cowboy hat on me. all. <laughs> like, I'm going to say, I say, I say hobby games. Because no, if I don't. say board, you do not say, I'm a hobby What did gamer. I just say? If I'm not talking to y'all, I will say, I say hobby games. And of course, they're going to be like, the fuck is that? Yeah. Because when I say board games, the normal people. Are gonna be like, oh, I like, I like Monopoly. Oh my gosh, you mean like Uno? <laughs> you like, you like to play <gasps> Sorry, dude. I love Cards oh Against gosh, Humanity. Dude. Yeah. So okay, not so, to rag on y'all. No, we're hey, ragging on you. Okay. No. This play is your an anti- play your games. Nope. Not that one. <laughs> this is an anti no. Cards Against Humanity <laughs> podcast. Okay. All right. So you're saying if it's you're talking to a gamer tabletop generally does mean what we're talking about warhammer style games right yes no if you're talking if you walk into black potion and you're like hey you guys up for some tabletop games <laughs> that's how he says it <laughs> yep why do you give him an accent <laughs> Table you, game. you guys want to play tabletop, tabletop games <laughs> you would you would you would probably gravitate towards that yes or no i i am gravitating towards board games gravity okay so even in this space, so tabletop games to you is indistinguishable from just the entire board game hobby, even to people who are board gamers. Yes. Okay. And you agree? No. No. You're on my side. Uh, it's not side, but you would if I <laughs> if I walked if you walked into to, to Black Potion and someone was like, "Hey, man, we're playing tabletops." To me, that's you. You got dudes on the table. You've got the rulers out. You got the okay. You've got the um, the p word. Protractor, <laughs> yeah, you've got the protractor. <laughs> Is there an amateur tractor? Or... <laughs> what a stupid joke! Sponsored, <laughs> sponsored by Cat. <laughs> <laughs> so, this, but this is an interesting question, though, right? Um, so, le- yeah, I can like branching off here. It's got a bit of a tangent. But I heard I was on a tangent. <laughs> tangent. We're using all sorts of math words today. <laughs> Um, tangent. Oh, tractor. tangent is a math word. Yeah, right. That's the on the calculator. <laughs> that word tan. Not talking about you being out in the sun. It's a tangent. Could be both. Uh, when you are talking to people who don't know anything about board games, like nothing at all, and you know, some mm-hmm. you, you, someone's like, "Hey, so what are your hobbies?" You go like, "I'm into board games," and they ask you what, or you say hobby games or whatever. <laughs> weird word you choose mm-hmm. oh yeah how do you i am actually a hobby gamer yeah so like if you whatever like whatever you lead into and they and they ask you to elaborate how do you describe that i'm a social deductionite i gamer. S- i say not monopoly not sorry not trouble honestly that's after that's, i that's, what about snobby. Rit? What about, after I, but after but I what say, about access to the allies? After I say those names, allies? they're not going to know what I'm talking about. Well, no. So that's not, I mean, if that, I that, say I, I play Scythe, they're going to be like, the fuck is that? <laughs> no, but that's. So, OK, so like, I mean, that's yeah. his favorite game, dude. How freaking dare you? No, but it's a great point, though, because I do the same thing. Right. So people are like, oh, yeah, like, I'm into board games. And you're like, oh, what kind of games? And I'm like, I immediately look at them and I make an immediate judgment call. Yeah, I'm like, totally. <laughs> Can I, I, tell I love this? judging people. <laughs> Guys, send us send us in your board game collection and we'll judge it. Okay. Ooh. Like I look at this person and be like, have they ever even seen like if I say the word pandemic? Yeah. Like, will that track? Oh, I've what about, seen like, that at Target. 
settlers, right? Like, will that at least be an opening point? Or can I, or do I just say like, oh yeah, Scythe, Dune Imperium, you know, these are my, these are my favorite games. Some of my rising sun, right? Honestly, just say it. it's worse than you being like, <laughs> I don't think intellectually you would understand what I, you if look I like told an you. idiot. <laughs> yeah. I think if I said these names, you would probably have an aneurysm from how incomprehensible it is. <laughs> Have you ever heard of uh, cosmic horror? You know. Have you ever heard of Twilight and the, ins- and the insanity that your mind is driven to if you peer upon the darkness <laughs> of an unknown god? That's probably what it's like if you looked at my board game collection. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I do like Monopoly, though. By the way, so gross. You should feel ashamed. I. You know what's fine. You know what, what's funny. I'm only a snob about cards against humanity. And I'm sorry if you like that game or if you develop that game. I doubt you're watching this video if you develop that game. Don't ever talk to me about it. Hey, what's your favorite card? <laughs> everyone everyone has the same freaking... The oops. bigger. Yep. Blacker. That. <laughs> the segment is over. Okay. <laughs> no. So... What other, are there other types of like ge- board gaming phrases or whatever that you feel like you have to clarify? I think I just say like, I like board games and I, I wait for a reply. If they say, oh, you mean like Monopoly? Then that to me is like, I understand what kind of gamer you are. And I'll go, kind of. Okay. So uh, if we're at a board game shop, kinda. it's different. Sure. Because you're in a known space. Yeah. So, all right. So I don't think any of us, I mean, Dwayne and I are single. Um, are you single still? You should be single. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just gotta check. Looking. Maybe you're like, right. Um, let's say I don't know when the last time you were. Have you ever been on a dating profile, like a, a app or anything like that? Yeah. Okay. How about you just share all of your personal information out here right now? <laughs> yeah. You your social it. credit cards. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Your security question. <laughs> your mother's maiden name. Yeah. Uh, no big deal. Your zip code just for like for in. fun, you know. Yeah. Like let's all just share our zip codes for fun. You go first. Yeah. Put the three digits on the back of your card. Yeah. Yeah. And like no specific card in general, just kind of like whichever one you pull out first, you know. <laughs> but all right, so maybe this won't resonate with anyone else but me. But like whenever I, it's been a minute since I've been on a dating app, but they always put like your hobbies and whatnot. I'm like board games are a big part of it, right? So you, I was right. Like, hey, I'm I'm a big board gamer or whatnot. Dating app red flag. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Board games, right? Like, if you're not into it, I don't care, right? Like, I don't want to attract somebody who's not into it, so move on. But it's always interesting because I do wonder if people don't, because a lot of people don't know about board games and they don't know about the world that's out there. So that like, do most, in my case, do most women read that and go, oh, this fucking weirdo. <laughs> cares enough about Monopoly to put it in his profile. I know. I, it's, they see, I really love board games, and they go, this person is obsessed with Monopoly. Like, <laughs> what the heck? I am genuinely worried if that is the thing that is happening. So I wish I, I had to throw a, a picture a, of you and self. Scythe. Yeah, right? Just me and my board game collection. Oh, my gosh. He'll get reported <laughs> on there. Like, <laughs> this creep is on... on whatever. <laughs> whatever you use, grinder. I don't know. Bodies behind that show. Uh, Speaking of, what's the best board game for a first date? We know it's not Splendor. <laughs> <laughs> Splendor is actually a phenomenal game for a first date because you can give nope. your partner gems. You can give them gems and diamonds. No. So what no. do you think? What do you think? Viewers, my beautiful viewers, all four of you. <laughs> There's 20. Minus us. Yes. 16. 15. Leave a comment if 14. your first date was ever board games and if it was Splendor. And if it was Splendor. Was there a second date? How yeah. <laughs> how long has it been since that person blocked you <laughs> on on everything? <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to, I don't, you know, I, I rag on Splendor so much, but it's crazy. It's just crazy to me, you know. Coming you know from what? a guy who literally has 17 copies of Azul. Hey, who, hey. I'm not the only one who, who, who has curated this collection. Okay. Oh, okay. 
Okay. That is all I'm saying. Okay. Okay. All right. Have you ever seen me talk about Azul specifically? I don't think so. Right now. What a nerd. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, he don't even have glasses. So what's your? He did this without glasses. Yeah. What's your? So what's your favorite? What's your go-to date game? Not not dating your wife. Like, oh, I'm going on a date with my wife. Like, like. Dominant species. <laughs> like you are. To alternate reality, right? Mm-hmm. We're not going to come up with any other weird scenarios. Alternate reality. Okay. Single Seb. Okay. Right? Right? Like, you, most of your life is like it is now, you know, like your exposure to games and whatnot. Okay. Go. What's your, what game are you If it's going to be a board game? Yep. First date. First date. She's brass. like, yep, I'm into it. Brass. It has to be brass. That's the level of... <laughs> Like partnership that I will need is like, can you play brass with me? Because if not, move on for your own safety and sanity. Man, what do you think? It's gonna be like, what is a hand of cards? <laughs> okay, th- so in Brass Birmingham, <laughs> you, <laughs> <laughs> I just- we are both eighteen hundreds <laughs> capitalists, okay, and we are trying to build a network of coal and iron so that we can build <laughs> our industries. <laughs> I'm I'm just I'm just trying to think about the idea of of sitting down to play a game like brass with somebody on a first date and then being like, hey, I know this game, this like this this whole like dating thing is supposed to be about like getting to know each other, but I need you to shut the fuck up and listen to me yes. for thirty <laughs> minutes yes. while I explain this to you. Easy peasy. If you can handle that. You can handle everything that comes yeah. after that in this uh, relationship. Honestly, it's golden, dude. Yeah. Here's the thing about that's me. A pretty, okay? That's I'm a about, pretty severe entry point, I'm about but. efficiency. Okay, I'm not going to ease you in. We're not going to pretend. Okay, You play this with me, and you're into it, or you're not, and we move on. Okay, And it's all good. It's all good if it's not in your tastes. Okay? If you just have horrible tastes and hobbies and and things, and you don't like it, that's fine. Move on. You know, Stop wasting my time. Okay? <laughs> Sorry, stop wasting alternate Seb's time, okay? Yeah. In universe 505142, okay? <laughs> All right, Dwayne, what's your go-to? Oh, God. I don't know. Blood on the clock tower. <laughs> Here's the thing. Hey, come hang out with my 17 other friends. Yeah. It, yeah. It'll here, be a really great here, opportunity let's for have us a first to get date. to know each other. Let's have a first date where I don't talk to you, and I force <laughs> you to talk to 16 <laughs> other strangers for three hours. Honestly, though, again, it's kind of the same thing, right? Like, if Hear me it's out. like, look, look, if you Hear me can, out. Hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> if I were to pick one, I'm going wingspan. Okay. I'm going. If Why? I were to. Why wingspan? Because here's the. Uh, it's me, like. Wait, wait, let me interject. It's light enough, right? Because he, you know. Why don't you just let him explain? He can explain. I just want to. I'm pre jumping. I'm pre jumping. I'm pre jumping his brain. He's pre- okay. Ex- he loves animals, right? Do you like the do you like animals enough to play this little game, right? Do you have the willingness to even try and learn this little easy peasy game? Okay? That's it. That's all. Go ahead. <laughs> because it is it is in my opinion on the lighter side. I was right. 100%. Bing, 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 bing. But it's not it's not it like it's not like It's a medium game. It's not like it's not a light game. It is a medium game, especially if you play with the expansions. But it, light enough. It's light enough. But it's not like super simple. How, yeah, 10 minutes of rules. I could play the I can play the game and also talk mm-hmm. to the other person. I'm not glued to my board. I'm also not trying to see what they're doing on their board. I'm like I'm playing the game, but I'm also interacting with the other person as well. Do I, you think the other person who maybe, I'm assuming, has mm-hmm. never played Wingspan before can do that as well? Or do you think your attempt to communicate to them is going to be kind of lost because they're going to be trying to absorb and understand the game rather than... Here's the thing. Because you're trying to have another conversation. It sounds to me like you're having mm-hmm. a conversation outside of the nature of the game. Right, which I think might be too much. I'm imagining really quick. Right, he teaches the game. He's like, "Cool, it's your turn." <laughs> By the way, what's your pension plan? <laughs> 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 no, but here's the thing. Right, wingspan is light enough. It's it's like nonchalant enough. Right, because it's just beautiful birds. 
I feel like you could just play it your hand face up. Sure. And as a conversational tool, be like, oh, so like, you know, blah, 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 blah. What are your hobbies? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's your turn, by the way. Um, honestly, this that's a really cool bird, and it might fit together with this one. Yeah. I, so I don't disagree principally. I just don't think that's – I think the game becomes the centerpiece of the activity at that point, right? So it's not – to me, Wingspan would be a really great, like, third date game, right? Where like oh the third date the huh? third date right because if you can demonstrate to me that she you got have plus the... she got past splendor yep she, she got, got past she got past brass yep <laughs> now we're going to, now we're going to wingspan <laughs> we're going to wingspan from brass if you can demonstrate your ability to play brass yeah again I mean it's, uh, we're good that's there's no issues no but here, to me wingspan is that like it I I do agree that it's a good like intermediate because like especially if you can play it on their own where it's op- closed hand because like. I talked about last week, like the handful of games that I usually choose for like first dates or first times playing because they're all open information games. Twilight Twilight Struggle. (laughs) And I will usually run through a couple of those games before graduating the stuff where it's like, this is closed information. Like, I will not see your hand. You have to read your stuff and make your own decisions. Wingspan's a really good transition point there, I think, because it like it again, it demonstrates a person's cognitive ability to be like, yep. You've taught me the rules. I've understood them, and I can grapple with this, and I can I can play. Apparently, my eight year old nephew can play this game, so that's a pretty that's a it's at least a, that's a decent bar, like starting point. Like if you can't do that, you also right? have a question in wingspan. It's not. I could you I could literally show you my card, and nothing yeah. would change. That's true for the most part. Like because there's nothing stopping me from. Stopping you, st- there's nothing I can do to stop you from playing whatever you need to play. Food. Although it would be really wicked, <laughs> like <laughs> first date game, be like, yeah, feel free to ask me any questions. And then if there, if you could, immediately hate draft, you know, like oh, someone or fucking, like, you, <laughs> yeah. What is the what? So what does this mean? And be like, oh, <laughs> oh, that'll be really useful if I play a bunch of predator cards, and then they play, and you never play a predator card. <laughs> I would. Yeah, um, I I say the one place you could hate draft somebody like that is if you see their food requirements. Drafting foods, yeah, yeah, that's probably the one space you could do that because, like, I will say, although it's really lenient, it is. I, I mean, that is literally the one space in the game that I will naturally hate draft, but I don't necessarily pay attention to what other people are doing. I just look at the stuff and go like, well, I'm I'm taking one, and it's none of the stuff in there is what I need. You basically just I'm gonna take, take stuff. the rarest thing. Oh, there's only one rodent. I'm taking the rodent. Oh, see, I I usually when I don't need specifically stuff in there, I take stuff to make sure they don't get a free reroll. So that I'll too. leave the different stuff. That in too, there. yeah, that too. That's fair. That's fair. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. So wingspan. I like wingspan better than I like brass. Like what brass the is like freaking a freaking fi- heck, dude. <laughs> I mean, for a date game. Okay. Okay. Wait. Okay. Wait. Is this we've met somewhere for a date and I and I just decided to bring this, or is no, this hey like, we're meeting to play a board game for our first date? That's a, I mean that does matter, right? Because if they express interest in board games ahead of time, so like I remember I went on a couple of dates with a person. We actually never played a board game, which was sad. But she told me she owned Scythe, and I was like, I know your brain was tingling. Oh yeah, boy. Uh, and we never actually got a chance. We never got around to playing it, which was sad. But um, I guess it was one of those, like, yeah, like I know this person owns Scythe. Like, we can, I can ask to play that at any time. Take like, a little deeper step. Good, you know, or something else along those lines. Um, but, yeah. So I guess I would say, like, somebody who hasn't played games or doesn't, like, maybe he's played a couple. Of, like, maybe they kind of, like, non-committal, like, oh, yeah, you know, I played, I played um, this game set settlers or something, you know, with my cousins. Welcome to, baby. Get some, get some flipping right in there. <laughs> Welcome, yeah, baby. I have, I have had such a mixed experience of teaching. Welcome to, where people are like, "Oh yeah, this is easy," and like, "Okay, now what do I do?" Every time we f- <laughs> would flip a new set of cards. Welcome to. Yes, I've never played. It's this a flipping game. right game. Oh, you have three streets Gross. to to write numbers. You know, on. honestly, it's a flipping right that I can I can tolerate. It's a good one. And have you ever played um, Welcome to Mo- Welcome the, the to the space Moon? One? No, it's good. I like it. 
but I've had to being like, cool, yeah, like there's a there's a cool game, cute, easy peasy, whatever. It took ten minutes, and I've had the experience of someone going like every single, like I said, every single turn. You have three options of numbers to write onto three streets, and they have to be in ascending order. That's it. So you just make them fit. Obviously, the numbers are not obviously, but I explained that the numbers that are more towards the middle are more common. And so if you see a rarer number, probably prioritize that. Otherwise, do whatever. And every single time we flipped the card, they were like, now what do I do? You know what you just described? Well, you might want to do this if you're going for this, or you can do this. and then You know what you just described for me? Hmm. Three sisters. <laughs> God <laughs> damn, bro. That entire time. Okay, to be fair, I, I <laughs> think I fumbled the teacher a little bit with that one. That was not like necessarily just it like... Wasn't- Honestly, it wasn't all you though. Like kind of a I thick rule book for like, rolling right. You I was just say like I don't think, I think there were a couple of problems. One, I think we all probably walked into it with this kind of expectation that a roll and right was going to be like an easier game. Roll the dice, do a thing, right? Like yeah. like it can't be that complicated, right? And then and all of a sudden you start to see all the things and you're like, wait a minute, there are. Like, what was it? The shed? And you have two pages. Is, 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 you have two pages it, to write on. Is it the sh- the shed? All the shed actions. Like every single shed action is a different freaking thing. In the middle, it's, it's of the, a different benefit or passive. And that's or end one game. piece of the game. In the middle like of the 20. teach, you gotta you gotta hit one of these like explaining. <laughs> 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 gotta gotta lock in real quick, huh? It is yeah. one of those games where too there's a lot to look at because yeah. it's on it's on two the beans. <laughs> the game each player plays on two sheets. They <laughs> they printed out two notebooks with sheets because there's two different aspects of the game. So you have an entire board that is your garden, and you have to worry about planting that and watering it, and then specifically making progress on the, pu- the pumpkin patches or whatever. And then you have the other side, which is the shed, the apiary, which is like, I don't know, for some reason you've raised fruit. bees. You've got fruit for trees. For some reason, pollinating, duh. You, <laughs> you've got, and th- so you've got all that, and then you have a goods tracker, which is like a separate bonus that you might get that'll unlock free actions, and those actions can be of any type. Oh. and. Doing those actions might unlock you a free bonus action in this specific area, which might unlock you a free plus one bonus to this, which, oh, look at that. It's unlocked you another free bonus action. It's in, it's a, it's it's a lot for a roll and write that fits inside a box the size of my palm. It's pretty deep. There's a lot going on. So, again, I don't necessarily blame you. And it's one of those things where, like, I don't know if any of us were in the right headspace to, like, really absorb it and, like, you know, appreciate it. It, it was, was like, that. Have, it was that day we were running through games. We played like it was Labor Day, seven or something like that. I mean, here's the thing, because like at the time, didn't like it, didn't didn't enjoy the teach. Not again. I don't blame you. It was just I'm like, there's too much going on here. Uh, after the game was over, I was like, okay, I feel more like I understand a little bit better. And Did I'm you like, feel okay. like by the end you ended up like? I'm oh, like, this is what matters. I'm like, okay, I understand that if I had done this instead of this, this might have been useful, so on and so forth. And like the downside of coming to terms with the fact that you are going to do 20%, 15, 10% of the things in the game, <laughs> you will check those blocks. You will not do most of the stuff in the game. Um, was was something that was was a challenge too. And like recognize because it's one thing when a game is like you're like, I'm gonna get to do one or two pieces of this game, not the three or four that are available to me. This game was like, pick a patch. Yeah, <laughs> focus on you're gonna that. water that shit. And maybe yeah. like one or two other ones. You may pick some fruit, or you might go to the shed a couple times. Yeah. But like you are not checking a majority of the blocks on on boxes on on, on your sheets. And I think that was difficult. And the more I've thought about it, and I was like, you know what? This actually isn't a terrible game. I don't love the idea of rolling rights part of me because, like, cognitively, I'm, like, I'm expending the use of the game, even though that's, for the cost, it's totally reasonable. Um, I would give it another shot at some point. I think I would be interested to, to give it another shot and see if I can, like, actually, like... I think their game was, like, 25 it. bucks. And I've really? Played it. Yeah, and I've played it enough to where, like... You've gotten at least twenty five dollars out of it. I think so. No, I still have plenty of sheets left. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing is, is like, <coughs> I I have that. I'm sure you guys do too. Like, I I think of something and I'm like, well, I'm gonna play this a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> and like most of the games in 
collection. It's like I've played like four times. I'm like, mm, I'm gonna be fine. I already said this, but I really want to play Title Blades again. Mm. It's a good game. It's a really good game. It's and I, every time I think about I it, really I'm like, like it. Dang, I want to try this thing now. Amazon, twenty five bucks. It's actually honestly more than I thought it was gonna cost. Yeah, tabletop gaming language. I think it's just like <laughs> a little. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't stop giving me language. All right, I got one more for that. Let's go back. Do you include COD-based games in the term board games? No. Huh? Card-based games. Oh, uh, card -based Star games. Realms is a good example where it's literally there is no board in the game. There are mm -hmm. no additional components. It is literally just cards. No. I will specify card games. That is a card game. See? And I... I say that as someone... I, I like board games that have a central board... Or players have boards to do stuff on. I don't want a board board made of cards. I don't want my whole player area to just be like 50 cards laid out. Terraforming Mars. Okay. So but, like, but like... Bonk. Wings, but like Wingspan. Yeah, that's just... Are you considering that a board that's a game or builder. a card game? Because you, could, you, have you a, could play the game without the boards. Like no, you couldn't. You couldn't. I mean, you, I mean, you could you lose just the action symbols and yeah. the costs. Yes, in a pinch, if you knew how to play the game, you could. Do oh it yeah, so. I guess so. The the eggs and costs yeah. and stuff like that. Never mind. Well, also, but like, they're the not benefit of like each unlocked one, where it's like you get a food, you get a food plus if you discard an egg, you get a second food, so on and so forth. But that's what I'm getting at. Like yeah. games that are card based that, but just so happen to have a board for like. Sure. A I mean, market or something like that. If you called Wingspan a board game, I don't think anyone's going to disagree with you. Right? So, like, my mind always gravitates towards one of my preferred games in the genre is Star Realms. Right? Classic deck builder. Dominion's another good example. Right? There is no board in those games. Have you played Dominion? Are you asking me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I own uh, the old big box, the original big box. Um, to me, so, like, Yes, like if if we're having a again if we're having a conversation amongst board gamers and somebody's like, oh yeah, I really call that a card game. I'm not going to disagree with you, but my problem is with calling it a card game again to the non, you know, oh no, right to the non gamer, the the uninitiated, if you will. <laughs> if you say card game, typically I think what people think of when you say card game is a standard fifty two deck, fifty two card deck game to me that's a card game oh okay spades yep blackjack poker the goat whatever rummy i don't know it's rummy yeah i don't know mm -hmm. whatever right? one of those one of those made up do rock one of those made up <laughs> games that's yeah. not poker yep any of those things to me that's a card game so if you say like i'm into card games to I me play, i, think I most play people speed will Play hard. <laughs> Egyptian rat. President. Beep. No offense if you play speed or hearts. I just think less of you. That's all. God, dude. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, whoa. Just kidding. Well, look at the time. <laughs> oh, that's all my chat. Is there any other? Are there any other like controversial, like uh, or like unclear? Board game terms. This has been us for this <laughs> week's episode, and we will see you very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>